Day one of the NFL draft is in the books, and what a night it was. And we're going to look at some day two draft targets for the Falcons in a mock draft for rounds two and three. So before we get to all that good stuff, quick self-plug here. We will be live on the channel again for day two of the NFL draft. Come hang out with us for pick 43 because this is a pick that Atlanta has to nail because their first round pick will contribute nothing to the 2024 Atlanta Falcons season. But I want to recap the first round of the NFL draft before we look at round two and three targets. Uh, no real surprise to open up the draft in my eyes. Caleb, Dan Daniels, May, Marvin Harrison Jr. All that was pretty chalky. And so were the next few picks. Until Terry Fontenot decided to be a domestic terrorist and go Michael Penix at pick number eight. Which I want to unpack this pick for another 30 seconds. I know we've heard a lot about it. The thing that really pains me is I feel bad for Penix. Like, I liked him a lot as a prospect. I was higher on him than most people. I feel bad that the city that picked him did not give him a very warm welcome. But I don't blame the fan base for being upset that they just signed Kirk Cousins to this monster deal. And then they turn around six weeks later and draft his replacement and basically punting on the opportunity to get an impact player to help the 2024, the 2025, the 2026 Falcons all years where Kirk Cousins has guaranteed money in his contract. So Panics, I, I'm sorry that your draft night was somewhat tainted and spoiled because the team that picked you, well, that fan base wanted nothing to do with you. But I wish you the best of luck, and if you get an opportunity to play for the Falcons, um, Sometime in the near future, before your like 26th or 27th birthday, I hope you kill it. I do think you're a good quarterback. I almost like keep talking to him right now. I do think Penix is a good quarterback. I just don't see the logic. And one last thing, Terry Fontenot's reasoning of we want to follow the Green Bay Packers model is completely flawed for two big reasons. One, the Packers took Jordan Love at 26, not at 8. There's a big difference between the 26th player in the draft and the 8th player in the draft. It's a lot easier to find good players in the top 10 than at pick 26. So I don't think you compare the two on that front. Two, Jordan Love got to sit behind Aaron Rodgers. Michael Penix is not sitting behind Aaron Rodgers. I don't think it's fair to compare the two methods. But have you changed your mind on the Michael Penix pick? I haven't. I still don't think it's a good pick for the 2024 Atlanta Falcons. I understand wanting to find a quarterback for the future, but I don't think this was the draft to do it. You could do it next year, maybe even, when Kirk Cousins only has two years left of guaranteed money. Not before he even takes a snap for the Falcons. All right, moving along with round one here. Love this pick by the Bears, Roma Dunze. Would have loved that pick for Atlanta. J.J. McCarthy to the Vikings, Olu Fashanu and Bo Nix, more offensive players, six quarterbacks going in the top 12. The Raiders get a great tight end in Brock Bowers. The Saints get a really solid offensive tackle. The Colts take the first defensive player of the draft. Byron Murphy goes to the Seahawks. Dallas Turner ends up falling all the way to pick 17. And you know Falcons fans are going to be having uh, a lot of receipts on Dallas Turner to see what he's up to this year. Amarius Mims to the Bengals. Jared Verse is a Ram. The Steelers go offensive line. Chop Robinson ends up going to the Dolphins much earlier than I anticipated. The Eagles support their defensive backs with Quinion Mitchell. Brian Thomas to the Jags to replace Calvin Ridley. Terrion Arnold falls all the way to 24. Really like this pick for Detroit. Jordan Morgan will go to the Packers to support Jordan Love. The Buccaneers get a new center for Baker Mayfield. Darius Robinson joins the Cardinals defense. Patrick Mahomes has the fastest shiny toy to throw to now with Xavier Worthy, although I personally am not super high on Xavier Worthy as a prospect. Uh, the Cowboys go with Tyler Guyton to bring in some relief because of their offensive line lost so many guys in free agency. Uh, the Ravens go DB Nate Wiggins, and the 49ers are likely trading one of their two wide receivers in my eyes after drafting Ricky Pearsall. Not a done deal, but it definitely turns the heat up on Debo Samuel or Brandon Ayuk. And then the Panthers traded back into round one, taking Xavier Leggett. So that was round one of the NFL draft. Now let's get ready for rounds two and three. Here are my top five targets for the Falcons at pick 43. This is a mixture of what I would do and what I think the Falcons would do. Basically, they made no first round pick for the 2024 Atlanta Falcons. They still need help at pass rusher. 
You've got Marshawn Nealand, Western Michigan edge rusher, Drazan Johnny Newton from Illinois. A couple of really good DBs since that's a, a area of weakness for them, opposite of A.J. Terrell, and we don't know if A.J. Terrell is a long-term player for them. One guy that really jumps out to me is Drazan Johnny Newton. I just think that he fits what the Falcons are looking for, which is some interior defensive line that can get to the quarterback. What do quarterbacks hate? Pressure. Where do they hate pressure from the most? Up the middle. Jazan Johnny Newton, look at his stats the last two seasons for the Fighting Illini. He did it better than anyone else. No one had more pressures in the FBS the last two years than Newton did for the Fighting Illini. So I think Newton at pick 43 would be a really good selection for Atlanta to try and make up for the Michael Penix pick at number eight. Now, before we look at some round three guys for the Atlanta Falcons, I do want to tell everyone watching about our sponsor today, which is Prize Picks, Daily Fantasy Made Easy. It's the number one daily fantasy sports platform in North America because all you have to do is pick two to six players and then choose more or less on their projected stats. Now, have some fun with me because Prize Picks already has stat projections for guys that went round one. I'm taking the more on Caleb Williams' passing yards. 3,400 yards, I know it's a lot for a rookie, but I think Caleb Williams can accomplish that. I'm going to go less on J.J. McCarthy. That's a big number for a guy I don't think is going to start many games for them this year. And then I like the more on Malik Neighbors, 875. Don't like Daniel Jones too much, but I think Neighbors is talented enough to get over that number. So if you like my selections, have some fun and get involved with season-long stat projections at Prize Picks. Use code CLNS for a first-time deposit match up to $100. I put all that information in the comments and description of today's video. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Pick more or pick less. Moving on to round number three. This is where I think Atlanta should really go edge rusher, specifically Jonah Ellis. Now, some other guys, including Kamari Lassiter from Georgia, Kyrie Jackson, he's been getting a lot of buzz coming out of Oregon. That is a name to keep an eye on if Atlanta wants to double dip at defense and they go maybe edge rusher in round one or pass rusher or in round two, I beg your pardon. I'm going to toss in two wide receivers. It's a very deep wide receiver draft class. I think guys you get in round two could go round one in other years. Guys you get in round three are round two guys in other years. So my guess is the Falcons wait for a wide receiver until round three or round four, given that they have two third round selections. My preferred target would be Jonah Ellis. I don't like the edge rushers that are mocked to go in round two. I'm not very high on Adissa Isaac from Penn State. Marshawn Neal and Chris Braswell. I am much higher on Jonah Ellis, though. 12 sacks last year for the Utah Utes. 16 tackles for loss. He's young. He's got a great first step. I think Ellis in round three and Newton in round two would make me come out of this draft feeling a lot better than the way it started. Now, another name to keep an eye on is Tez Walker. From a physical trait standpoint, there's a lot to like about him. Now, there are some questions about his production because we just haven't seen him play against legit corners very much. He started off at a community college, I remember, went to Kent State, then transferred to UNC. He was a big-time commit for the Tar Heels in the transfer portal. And then, unfortunately, the NCAA does what the NCAA always does. It sucks. They didn't let him play to start the year. But he ended up playing eight games with Drake May and put up 700 yards and seven touchdowns and a big-time playmaker. So I could see Atlanta in round three going, the traits are good enough for us to invest the 79th overall pick in him. Now, who do you want the Falcons to pick? For me, I think the best pick for Atlanta right now would be Jazan Johnny Newton. He can generate pressure up the middle for you. The, the Falcons need pass rushing help. There's just no other way around it, and I don't like the edge rushers that are supposed to go round two which is why I thought they should have gone Dallas Turner, Jared versus someone in round number one. But ultimately, they wait to address a huge need in round two. And Raheem Morris and Jimmy Lake and Terry Fontenot, they better have one hell of a plan. Because if the plan is, we're going to hope that D'Angelo Malone takes a big step forward this year, that's a dog shit plan. 
So we're going to find out what the Falcons' plan is at pass rush because they haven't had a good one for years, and they had a great opportunity to satisfy that need with a top 10 pick, and they just think, I'm getting too worked up. Hopefully they figure out their pass rushing woes in day two of the draft.